Hello, and welcome to the Newberry Center for Renaissance Studies, Learning from Pre-Modern Plagues video series. My name is Sarah Wilson. I'm a medieval literary historian, and I also work in the Newberry's Department of Public Engagement. Today, I'm pleased to share with you my installment, St. Sebastian and the Arrows of the Plague. So if you were listening carefully to the introductory music, you may have noticed the name Sebastian in the hymn. This is a 15th century motet by Guillaume Dufay, and it represents but one of a great many references to St. Sebastian in late medieval music, literature, art, and religious culture. St. Sebastian became immensely popular in the Middle Ages because he was considered to be the major patron saint of the plague. In today's short video, I'm going to discuss why that was the case and show you where you can find him at the Newberry Library, specifically in this copy of the prayer book of Margaret of Croy. So this prayer book or book of hours was compiled for Margaret around 1450. She was a noblewoman in the court of Philip the Good, the Duke of Burgundy. We know that this book was Margaret's personal property as her name is inscribed in four of the prayers. It's beautifully illustrated and you can access the entire manuscript digitally in our online collection. Books of hours or prayer books are a great way to glean insight into how the plague impacted devotional life and culture. In the aftermath of the Black Death of 1348, the clergy was drastically reduced because priests were going out and administering the last rites to the sick and the dying. As a result, more people needed a means by which they could stay connected to the church in the possible absence of a priest. This propelled a growing laicization of religious mm -hmm. practice in the 14th and 15th centuries. And while these prayer books preceded the Black Death, they became even more popular in its aftermath in part because of these wider shifts. The Book of Hours would follow the monastic divine office so that someone could say the same prayers every hour that the monks would. They would also include a number of additional texts such as the penitential psalms, the office of the dead, or pictured here, the suffrages of the saints. The suffrages are additional pleas for help from specific saints, and the choice of saints for the suffrages can reveal a lot about the devotional preferences of a book's owner. It can also indicate which saints were popular in the owner's community and period of time. Each suffrage would begin with an invocation of a chosen saint, followed by a longer prayer, which usually recounted some biographical information or praise an aspect of the saint's holiness. It continues with a plea to the saint to intercede on behalf of the reader to God. So the inclusion of St. Sebastian in Margaret's prayer book indicates that he would have had a special resonance for her during this time, which makes sense given how much the plague recurred after the initial outbreak in the mid 14th century. So who was St. Sebastian? According to his fifth century biography, Sebastian was born in Gaul in the third century. He entered the Roman army and became an officer and converted to Christianity and also encouraged many others to do the same. Once this was discovered, the Emperor Diocletian ordered that Sebastian be executed by arrows. Sebastian survived, however, and then he went on to publicly harangue Diocletian for how he had been treating Christians. Upon hearing this, the emperor then ordered that Sebastian be bludgeoned to death and thrown into a river. It might not seem intuitive that this third century martyr would become such a central intercessory saint to people suffering from the plague in the late Middle Ages. But one of the most consistent metaphors for the plague was in fact the arrow. In the Iliad, Homer envisions the plague in Agamemnon's camp as being engendered by a wrathful Apollo shooting his victims wantonly with pestilential arrows. In the Old Testament, Yahweh declares, I will exhaust all my arrows against them, emaciating hunger and consuming fever and bitter pestilence. Job also laments that the arrows of the Almighty are within me. In medieval sermons, the plague is frequently figured as arrows and blows smited upon the unrepentant by God as a punishment for sin and societal corruption. Most of the image of Sebastian, like this one, show him patiently suffering his arrow wounds, which would also conjure the appearance of the dark bubos that characterized the Black Death. By praying to St. Sebastian, medieval people would hope both that he might absorb the pestilential arrows that were being sent towards them, as well as give them the strength to bear the illness with fortitude and to remember to pray for their sins to God if they did indeed succumb to the plague. And this partly explains why Margaret might have included St. Sebastian in her Book of Hours as a reminder to stay spiritually vigilant in the face of so many recurring episodes of the plague. 
to return to the hymn at the beginning, included in Latin, but here is an English translation. Blessed Sebastian, great is your faith. Intercede for us with the Lord Jesus Christ so that we may be delivered from the epidemic plague and sickness. Amen. There are many more images of St. Sebastian from the medieval period and beyond, but I hope this has piqued your interest and attention to the use of the arrows as one of the primary metaphors in medieval depictions of the plague. Thank you for tuning into Learning from Premodern Plagues. A new installment will be made available soon. Please be in touch with any questions by emailing renaissance at newberry.org. Thank you and stay well.